I needed to be strong for um, myself, I guess. I love to watch the way the moonlight dances in your eyes. You realise the um, importance of friendship, importance of um, loving each other and, and taking time out to be with each other. Pre-diagnose, I was running a vineyard. I was very busy. I thought I was just feeling a little uh, worn out from the vineyard. I kept thinking maybe I'm overworked. I did go to three doctors and had blood tests done. All come back, you're fine. So I'm thinking, why am I doing this? I never ever miss mammograms. I've been doing them for quite some time. So I went along in August. Um, they obviously did the mammogram and then they called me back and said we need to um, look at doing a biopsy. We found a very small calcification. I was um, told that the biopsy had come back as a DCIS, which is ductural carcinoma in situ, and it was only six mils. So very small, however, it needed to come out. Nobody wants to hear that. So I just basically got out very quickly. I, I was in complete denial, definitely. Once I got home, I, it kind of hit me a little more. And then I slept on it that night and then decided in the morning my plan of how I was going to tackle this. One of the things I needed to do was to make sure I had the best surgeon. Well, Andrea came to see me a, a while ago in our rooms here at St John of God at Perth Specialist Breast Care, um, really because she was, she'd been found to have a very small area of what appeared to be precancerous change in the breast. When I got up to Christabel Saunders and met Christabel, um, she said, look, this is routine lumpectomy. We can sort this out pretty quickly. It won't be too difficult. Um, but we'll, what we'll do is a hook wire procedure. During the hook wire procedure, three members of staff came in and were looking at the screen. And I could in see the intensity on their faces. And I guess for me, I knew then something has gone really wrong here. Christabel came straight in afterwards and said, Andrea, this has all changed. Christabel explained to me that my six millimetre lump was actually 62 millimetres with a further two that had been missed and they were 43 millimetres and 29 millimetres. She said, Andrew, we have to remove your breast. It is pretty much all DCIS and it's extensive. So telling a woman that she needs a mastectomy is a pretty confronting thing to do. You know, you might say, well, it's just your breast and it's threatening your life, but it's a, lo a loss of lots of things. Our breasts mean a lot of things to us, our womanhood. They remind us of breastfeeding our children. They have to do with our sexuality, about how we interact with our partners. My son, when he was really little, couldn't sleep. So he would say, mommy, tell me fairy stories. So I did. I would make up stories about this fairy called Christabel and how she was so amazing. We live on a farm so she would cure the animals and she would feed them and she would do all sorts of wonderful things and I would say to him, Morrison, if you get scared at night, remember Christabel is sitting on the edge of your bed and sometimes she tickles your feet. So if you feel a tickle, it's Christabel. Well, I can tell you, when Christabel came into my room in St John's and put her hand on my leg, telling me I'd been cured, I've got it all, I have, I have got this. I had my Christabel sitting on the edge of the bed. I feel pretty when you stare across the room. My girlfriends and my luncheon girlfriends in particular, um, we've always celebrated with a little bit of GH mum and so now it's a little more important for me um, and for them. Around 1500 women each year in WA will be diagnosed with breast cancer. So that's 1500 women 
and their families and their partners and their children and their parents and their friends who will be affected by this disease. So that gives you a real motivation to not only offer excellent treatment but excellent research to improve that treatment. I've been delighted to work here at St John of God because that's really an ethos that they buy into here, that good clinical outcomes are due to good and excellent clinical practice but based on excellent research. I'm determined to make sure I can do whatever I can so that no other woman, girl, goes through what I've just been through. Without research and funding, we can't go anywhere. After this whole process, it is the small stuff. It's the stuff my husband and I really cherish, and it's the stuff where he holds my hand during the night. Little tiny things that I, I sing quite a bit during the night, and now he, he loves that. I'm so glad you do that. I'm so glad you're home because um, since you've been home, the house is a lot happier, and um, there's more, there's more, um, more celebration in the house. Question circle.